Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm here with Dogwood co-founder, advisor, planner at heart, Jason Newcomer. Jason Newcomer, sorry, Jason. Jason, welcome, how's it going? Thank you, going, going awesome. It's, it's great to be here with you, Jim. And, and where are you today? So I'm in, uh, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, um, and, uh, and it's a beautiful day here. It's about 60 degrees and sunny. Um, like I was saying, I'm, I'm less than a day out from finding out if I'm going to have a boy or a girl uh, born in March. So I'm on cloud nine right now. That is such, a, such an appropriate moment for this conversation, because when we talk about wealth planning, we talk about estate planning, it's all about helping drive impact to families and your family is, is expanding and there's probably nothing more exciting than that. It's actually a, probably a great time to engage with clients too when they're having, a, having an addition to the family to make sure that all their documents are up. Let's start with, the, let's start with Dogwood. Tell us a little about Dogwood. How did you start it? Uh, it's you and Eric. Tell us more. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Eric Sheeran and I uh, broke away from an RIA here in Kansas City, uh, in the Kansas City area, and we launched Dogwood Wealth Management back in February of this year. So we've been, uh, we've had our doors open for about eight and a half months right now. Uh, we're serving just over 100 client households, uh, for the most part, in the Kansas City area. Uh, we're a fee-only practice. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're, we're loving the entrepreneurial, uh, life, uh, you know, eight, eight months into it. Well, tell, tell, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing before Dogwood that led you to this aha of, I'm going to go out and start my own practice. And, um, and they, they actually gave you the confidence to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, myself, uh, my background uh, has always been in, in planning. Uh, I started at the previous firm over a decade ago as a paraplanner associate advisor, uh, obtained the CFP designation. That was the route that I wanted to go down and then became sort of a, a lead financial planner there at the previous firm. Um, and, you know, going out and, and cultivating new relationships was never really something that got me super excited. I kind of like to focus on the relationships that I had and just refining the process of, of how I would meet with clients and the, the deliverables that we would offer to those clients, the areas that we touch in their financial lives. And so the direction I took at my previous firm, uh, I became the director of financial planning. I was in charge of uh, working with the advisors, getting the review schedules, uh, working with, uh, we actually had in-house CPAs, we had uh, partnerships with a couple local estate attorneys and insurance professionals. So my tasks were really to coordinate between the advisors and all of the subject matter experts and make sure that the uh, client experience was consistent among all of the client households. Um, and it was a lot to take on. It was a fun, uh, fun opportunity for me. Um, but in doing so, you know, I kind of realized that uh, that is the direction I liked. I liked having, uh, I like building systems. I like building processes. Uh, I actually, in my spare time with my business partner, sort of put together a, a business plan, not, not thinking that we'd ever do something like this. You know, that was silly. We had a, you know, newborn baby at home and, and we were building out our family and leaving a, a secure, comfortable job was not something that was on my radar. Um, but the more that we focused on, on the systems and, and building out, you know, one of the things we did early on was we said, if we were to start over from scratch, let's look at the tech stack. Let's look at, you know, the custodian that we'd use. Let's look at the financial planning software we'd use. And so in doing that, that really became fun was, was building out these processes and the technologies that we would use. And after a while, we kind of stepped back and said, you know, this thought exercise, you know, has, has at some point crossed the line into a business plan and we think it's viable and so we, we kind of talked ourselves into it. We, you know, of course, our spouses were both on board. And uh, from there, it was, let's set a deadline and, and let's go. Okay, so you you brought this planning-centric approach into your practice and you split off from your prior firm and started Dogwood. Tell us a little about how Dogwood is different when you start a conversation with a, with a, uh, a, a new client or a prospective client. How do you... How does it show up differently to them? You know, we, we think one of the things that makes us uh, unique, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of planners might, um, might say, oh, yeah, that is something that we do. Um, but one of the things that we set up was our process. We're very process-oriented and process-driven. 
Um, we, uh, we did everything setting up the business with the client in mind, you know, what, what would a good client experience look like? And so we came up with a, a meeting process, uh, where we'd sit down with a client at a minimum of three times a year. And each meeting, of course, we'd be talking about their financial plan and their goals and, you know, how things changed since the last time we spoke with you, we do manage investments. So there's certainly always something to talk about there, but we wanted to have a, sort of a thematic approach to our meeting. So. The first meeting that we have, uh, you know, with a client, you know, the first part of the year, uh, January to April, we kind of bunch all of it together. So all of our clients are on the same schedule. That helps us internally as well. Uh, the first meeting that we have focuses around risk management and protection and, you know, things like looking at uh, enforced illustrations on life insurance policies, stress tests. Uh, we'll even do things like collect declaration pages on property and casualty insurance and work with an independent broker to shop those. By the time May rolls around, we shift gears into taxes and tax planning. Most of our clients have had their returns filed, and, and we get copies of those returns. We're running projections for the year, uh, maybe even ahead into next year, working with our clients' tax professionals as well. And then when we get to that third meeting uh, that'll take place between September and December, our focus shifts again towards estate planning. And that's really where vanilla comes into play in, in our practice, you know, in, in, in our tech stack. But we thought it would be, uh, you know, really good for our clients at least once a year to understand if something happened to you, whether it was an illness or you became incapacitated or you know, passed away, uh, what happens, you know, with the surviving spouse or with the beneficiaries? Um, let's take stock of where all of your assets are, not just the assets that we manage, those are important, but we also care about, you know, that, that $5,000 old vehicle that's sitting in your backyard, you know, those are the things that can really cause pain uh, to beneficiaries of our clients. And so we, we really try to go things uh, through things with a fine tooth comb and uh, an inventory out, you know, everything that they own, everybody that's involved in their family picture, uh, and, and that's you know, yeah. using vanilla has, has certainly helped. Now, now Jason, um, the, the t tell us a little bit the types of clients. We'll get into some of the estate planning in a minute, but tell us about the, some of the clients that you work with. Are you dealing with taxable estates, non-taxable estates? You know, you've laid this plan out of the, th the three pillars in a year and clients that seems to be, you guys are, uh, growing quickly and clients seem to buy into that process. Uh, what type of clients are, are coming in the door and what are you learning about how that's uh, how that's attracting what type of clients it's attracting? Uh, yeah, to you? yeah, yeah. So, you know, like like a lot of other RIAs out there, you find that, you know, over time you you do have kind of like that uh, demographic, you know, avatar client that you work with and you've got clients that fall outside of that range. But I would say if, if you kind of put them all on a bell curve, uh, and just focused on that, you know, highest part of that bell curve. Most of our clients are, you know, here in the Midwest, in the Kansas City area, um, you know, pre-retirees, a lot of them are retired. Uh, they've maybe got families or blended families, uh, net worth anywhere between, you know, half a million dollars to a few million dollars. Uh, so nobody's dealing with taxable estates. Um, and, and so, but what makes them all unique is just the family dynamics. Um, and, and that's where estate planning has really allowed us, you know, focusing on estate planning and really diving into that allows us to get to know our clients on a deeper level. You know, tell us about your kids, tell us about your relationship with them, tell us about your grandkids and your relationship with them as well. So that's, yeah. that's probably our avatar client. And do you ever find that clients want to shy away from the estate planning conversation? They just want to, they want to keep you in the, in the wealth management box? Uh, you know, we're, we're very clear with our clients and who we wanted to work with. We, we thought that this uh, service model that we've built out, we really feel strongly that it's right for us as planners. It allows us to dive into every area and aspect of our clients' lives. And so we, we do kind of require that there's buy-in from the client as well. Like, okay, this is the relationship that we want to have with you. Um, it's really kind of non-negotiable. Um, you know, we, and, we and, that's, no and that's because you're a fee-based advisor, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, we, 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 you know, have our definition of how we think financial planning should be done. And that's, you know, it, it, in large part, why we left the firm we were at to start Dogwood was to do financial planning the way that we wanted it done. 
And so we've had really good buy-in from those clients that uh, have have joined on with us. And and so there hasn't really been a whole lot of pushback of, you know, I, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, let's just focus on the investments. That's not been our experience. Yeah. I think, I think uh, one of the things that, that I personally feel is that the word sometimes can feel like a, like an ominous word because you're talking about final things, but at the end of the day, it's actually when you have the conversation, you start realizing there's a lot of really interesting things to, to talk about, about who you are as a person and what you value that, that helps you make better decisions in, in, in all parts of your life. Um, Maybe maybe you could share a, a story or two about how the estate planning conversation has has changed uh, how you how you interact and sort of the how you connect to, to some of your clients. Yeah, um, you know, like I said, you do deepen the relationships with clients once you get into that area of their you know their financial lives, and it is sometimes an uncomfortable thing for them to talk about. A lot of times, they've not even you know thought about it, or maybe they thought about it, but not really talked about it uh, through with a spouse or a loved one. Um, so you know, just, just some cases that we've seen uh, in the last uh, four months, we've probably received uh, about 60 estate plans, uh, you know, various forms of, of plans from our clients. And, and we're, we're going through those and uh, you know, learning about clients. And unfortunately, uh, you know, we're, we've got a client right now who, um, she came on board with us back uh, really early on in our launch, and then shortly thereafter was uh, had received a, a poor health diagnosis uh, that, that's terminal. And so we kind of fast tracked that plan. That was that was actually one of the very first plans that we uh, worked with Vanilla on. And uh, so ultimately, it, it led to a discussion about you know she's very charitable, charitably inclined. Uh, we we kind of had further discussion about what her goals are now, you know, how have they changed since receiving this diagnosis? Uh, we met with her trustee um, on, on her trust. There's a family meeting scheduled where all of her children are invited in to attend kind of a round table discussion of, okay, here's how your mother's plans, you know, are laid out and these are her objectives and goals. And so we're able to kind of facilitate that conversation, you know, and, and we're not the attorney, we're just someone who understands our client and what is important to her and, and what she values. So um, we're able to facilitate that conversation with her family. Um, you know, another example I'd, I'd give where estate planning has, you know, that, that discussion has helped us out in our practice just happened about 45 minutes ago. Um, we had a meeting with a client who really doesn't have a complicated, you know, plan at, at all. There's, there's a will that she's got. Uh, and really, that's about it. Um, and there's no need for an exotic trust in this case. Uh, but what we had asked her in preparing for the meeting was, let's create an inventory of everything that you own. Um, okay, we see that you own your home. It's owned by you individually. Uh, is there a beneficiary deed on the property? Because right now, what would happen is this home would go through probate, and we'd like to avoid that if possible. We're able to work with her and go through county records and find that there was no deed uh, she since rectified that issue, and we got that email about 45 minutes ago that that's been taken care of, uh, as well as her bank account. So, you know, that's that's just a, a small win for us. You know, the the client might win. think it, it's a big yeah. You know, it's it's just you know this was something easy uh, for us to do, and and that's why I think advisors really shouldn't shy away from. I'm not an estate planner. I'm not an attorney. So you need to go talk to someone else. There are things that you can be doing every single day in these meetings with clients to add value. Let's let's talk about this uh, for a second because I think it's it's very relevant. There are advisors out there that that are intimidated by these conversations. How did you how did you get comfortable starting these conversations and asking questions where you you may not actually know the answer, but um, you know, like walk us through your your journey into into doing these conversations. Yeah. Um... You know, the, the CSP uh, has a, a course dedicated to estate planning. So that certainly gives you a good foundation of knowledge, you know, shameless plug for CFP. But, um, you know, outside of that, there's certainly a lot of research that you can do online. I actually enrolled in a, a class through the uh, American College on advanced estate planning techniques. I don't think that that's the right approach for everybody. Um, another thing, a lot of people learn just by doing and immersing yourself in that world and in uh, you know, just ask 
the client for the documents, read through the trusts, read through the power of attorney forms and, and understand how there's a hierarchy involved in decision makers and understand how the documents flow and how they all work together and they're intertwined to create a plan. So I, I would say immersive learning is probably one of the best things that you can do, but also yeah. being comfortable saying, I don't know the answer to that. Let's, let's bring in someone who's a subject matter expert. Yeah, and sometimes it's the most important motion is asking the question to surface the problem and then figuring out, okay, we're going to learn this answer together versus I have the answer, right? Yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, do you, are you, if you're grabbing a coffee with another advisor, are you telling them, hey, man, you got you to gotta do this. It's a game changer for conversations. Like, uh, obviously, you've got the playbook you know, you use, uh, you use the, you do the risk, the tax and the state. How do you think about, how do you think about like, you know, should every advisor be doing estate planning or just the ones that are comfortable with it? Yeah, I think, you know, um, just in the, just over a decade that I've been in, you know, working in financial planning, I've seen this big, you know, evolution of what financial planners do from investment management uh, and then a big push to, to tax planning and things like social security planning. And so there was some reluctance at first to, to dive into those areas. I'm not a CPA. I can't give you tax advice. Um, you know, now I'm, I'm so comfortable leading those tax discussions and, and of course, working with the CPAs. The next step for me and in my career was estate planning. And, and for a while, it was just kind of a, oh, you know, that's a big hairy thing that I'm not sure that I'm ready to, uh, to go into that world. Uh, but really immersing myself in that, I, I see one, it's a massive value add for our clients. But for us, it also allows us to speak the same language as other centers of influence uh, with our firm, you know, estate attorneys, uh, that's a big part. So we can now facilitate these conversations with estate attorneys or with the next generation of, uh, of clients uh, at, the, at the firm. So it's absolutely cool. something that I would encourage advisors to explore. Yeah. So let's, let's, Let's switch a little bit and talk about how you know you have the benefit of sort of a blank canvas when you st stand up a new firm. How did you guys think about technology? Where have you brought technology? And obviously you're using vanilla, but what else are you using that that ties this rhythm of planning together? Mm -hmm. So our uh, our core planning tool that we use at our firm is eMoney. Uh, we think eMoney is a great tool. Um, it's the tool that I, you know, had used for years, and and really was the one that we wanted to use. Uh, from a tax planning standpoint, we we feel like eMoney is directionally correct. We use Holista Plan because to us, it's a dedicated tax planning tool. They do a fantastic job. Same thing with estate planning. eMoney does have some features uh, with respect to flowcharts and diagrams, but because we wanted to go just a little bit further and you know have have estate planning as a standalone tool. That's where we explored and, and found uh, vanilla to be far and away the best solution that, that we've seen. Great, and are, you, and, and are you finding the clients, they want, they just want the PDFs, they want the, they want to log in and see it? Like how, where, you know, you mentioned you're sort of a, you're talking to the pre-retiree or the, the, the recently retired, where are they in the wanting to check their plans and log in and see all the stuff versus, print the nice PDF and have that tombstone slide across yeah. the desk. Yeah, yeah. it's, uh, th there's been a lot of different uh, experiences there. Um, the, the PDF uh, that we export from Vanilla, the report itself is the focal point of our meeting where we're focusing on estate uh, planning. And, and so we, we use that uh, at the very beginning of that meeting to say, if this is not, uh, you know, we're not we're not telling you that anything is wrong with this. This is just an inventory of what you've got today. And if something were to happen, uh, this is uh, this is how things would flow. So we use that as as the conversation piece. And then from there, uh, you know, we we have uh, facilitated a few family meetings where uh, you can really customize that report and say, all right, do you want us to go into this waterfall that's talking about, you know, actual dollar amounts uh, because. Uh, at least in my family that I grew up in, that was kind of like a taboo thing. You know, you, you didn't want to ask mom and dad how much money they had. Um, but it's still important to have a working knowledge of how the estate plan itself works. So we, we use that PDF in every single meeting uh, that we've had with clients, whether they come to us with no plan, you know, maybe they've got a will or they've, uh, they're on their fourth amendment to their trust. Uh, we're running everything through that PDF. Got it. Do you... Um... 
Well, I'm just going to take a moment and call out to the audience here. If you want to ask a question to Jason, now is a great time to either type it into the Q&A or raise your hand on the, the hand raise feature at the bottom of the, the panel there. Uh, and we can we can get you on the call. And, and um, so, Jason, there's a, uh, let's see, I'm going to, uh, Fraser, you raised your hand. Fraser, how are you? Uh, fine, thanks. Um, uh, I've sort of danced around vanilla a little bit here and there over the years. And I'm, I do a lot of work with taxable estates. Um, and so I, I, I've got lots of questions, but I'll sort of um, gear toward one thing. How do you synthesize the text that underpins a lot of wills and trusts into vanilla? Yeah. Do you, uh, Jason, do you want to talk about how you experience it from the customer perspective? And I'm happy to share how we think about it here, but. Yeah, just, I guess the mechanics of getting the documents through and then the deliverable that we receive back, is that kind of the. Yeah, I, I, I think the someone, a new client comes to you and says, I have a will and a revocable trust. And sounds like you're not doing a lot of irrevocable trust stuff, but will revocable trust, lots of things. Yep. Um, are you the one who is synthesizing that and then entering it into vanilla and how do you how do you sort of make sure it's correct and that the values attached to it are right yeah i'll, I'll go over uh, our process so when we have a client bring our you know sometimes they'll they'll have just the the old binder that's been sitting in a safe deposit box or or if we're lucky they've got digital uh you know copies of the documents uh we'll take those documents and then begin creating, adding the client to vanilla, adding the biographical information, adding information about their family members, um, you know, their, their assets that are held either directly through Dogwood or held away uh, values and you know, beneficiaries ownership. And then from there, we're able to upload the images uh, you know, in PDF format uh, to vanilla. Uh, we wait uh, you know, a few days sometimes, and, and then we'll receive a, an email notification that we've got a report to review. Uh, that report does, Frazier, maybe you've seen a, a copy of that report or, or a demo, um, but it does a really good job of individual documents. You know, you'll, you'll have one page for financial power of attorney, another page for healthcare power of attorney, and a flow chart of who is the primary agent, who's the secondary or tertiary. Um, on the trust, that's probably the, the page that we spend the most time on is how does the trust work while both spouses are alive? Uh, after the death of one spouse, how would things flow? And then upon the death of the second spouse, uh, ultimately how do assets get down to, to where they were intended? Got it, so, yeah. so Vanilla is doing that for you? Yes, that's right. Yeah, so Fraser, part, part of the, the, the magic behind the scenes at Vanilla is we've got a, a team of estate strategists. These are people who are either lawyers or paralegals who have grown up doing this work. Uh, who will abstract those documents, take all the key provisions, put them into the diagrams of uh, inside the software so that when, when you show up with a client, you're showing up with a visual diagram of uh, how their entities are set up and how the, the assets flow. And then if you want to go and look at the provisions underneath each entity, it's a simple click and you get a fly-in that will, that will share the text and key provisions. And so uh, what we've built actually is pretty powerful software for our team to do that and for our larger clients that have a uh, in-house state strategist team, we, uh, we do offer them the ability to, to use that software too so that they can, they can do their own abstractions. So it's kind of a hybrid model. We'll do it for you if you want, or if you have your own team that will do it, you can do it yourself. But there's, we've usually found there's a division of labor between the advisor who's really good at collecting the information, driving the conversation, and then there's people who are much better at reading the documents and understanding how they all tie together and what goes where into the software. The great thing is once that information is in the software, it's continuous, it's alive in there. So you, you're, un unless you change your documents, uh, all the trust provisions, all the beneficiaries and fiduciaries are there and they're listed out. And uh, it makes it a great checkpoint every year to go back to, hey, it's Cousin Joe's still the right person to have on this account. Anything changed in your family with your beneficiaries, with your fiduciaries, and then it and then it feeds back into Jason's workflow that he talks about, which is really creating that checklist of what are the things that the client has to do uh, if there's things that need to be updated. 
uh, one more follow-up question and then I'll cede the floor. Thank you. Um, the, when you are responsible for driving the financial advice or the estate planning advice, like, oh, I should sell a company. Should I be putting it in this type of trust? Should I be using a charitable remainder trust? You know, lots of big, big concepts. How does that typically work um, when using vanilla and your back office team, if, if any? Yeah, so I'll take that because uh, Jason, I don't know if, if if you're using any of those features. Um, we are we are building out a, a set of of tools. There, some of them are you know, out with beta with with some of our customers testing that really uh, allows the the consideration of how different strategies would affect the overall estate. So, uh, what would a slat do? What would a grant do? What would a um, uh, what does annual gifting look like? Should should it be in a in a crut? We those those features are you know our focus right now is really about helping get get everyone's financial and state information into the uh, into the into the software and showing the overall estate tax liability. Mm -hmm. And then we're adding in modules and features and and um, over the next over the coming call it, you know year that will that will really add out that capacity for for complex modeling. Uh, and right now, right now that that's uh, kind of done in partnership. You know, we've we've been testing it out in partnership with with a handful of clients. And if you're it's something you're interested in, we can definitely um, we could we definitely follow up and have another conversation. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for your questions, Fraser. Um, anyone else with uh, questions or uh, comments? That there's a question in the chat uh, from Grant. Um, Grant asks, is there insurance equivalent to vanilla, i.e., a life and PNC? And holistic plan, like you know, it sounds like you got holistic plan for your tax motion and vanilla for your estate. But Jason, are you using any software on on your risk management side? Uh, you, you know, we're we're running a lot of things uh, through eMoney right now. We don't have like a standalone uh, you know, insurance focused thing. Um, we feel eMoney does a pretty good job with the with the life insurance and disability and long term care on the property and casualty side. Um, we've got a few uh, independent property and casualty brokers, uh, not on staff at all, but uh, more centers of influence that we collect that information from our clients. Uh, we send it uh, for review, uh, you know, for, for comparison shopping purposes, and then get some quotes back. And we kind of package it up neatly uh, and a deliverable for the client, but no standalone tool there. If there is one, I'd love to know about it. Yeah. Uh, so would I. Um, okay. I, any other final questions for for Jason? We don't. I don't see any hands raised or any question. Any other questions in the chat? Um, Jason, just sort of final question from us to you. Uh, what is the you know what's the overall experience that you that you feel when uh, when when you have these positive conversations? Like at the end of the day, where do you feel like is the most impactful thing that you've that you've really helped your clients connect with? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think, like I said, a lot of our clients, um, the the avatar client here, these aren't, you know, multi multi millionaire clients. You know, they've they've got fairly simple financial lives, um, but they they there are still things that pop up in their lives that could cause complications down the road. Uh, just a short example of that, uh, we got a, an alert on a vanilla report uh, several weeks ago that there was a typo. Uh, there were several typos, and one of the things vanilla does is it tells you what page on which document there's a typo. Uh, Vanilla had actually identified that the client who had named their son you know, had the same name, but a different middle initial. Uh, the attorney had actually drafted the power of attorney form as the client had named himself as the primary agent. And uh, so Vanilla pointed that out. That was a, a quick little thing for us to say, you know, hey, uh, go back to that attorney, have them, have them get this form updated because that might cause some issues down the road. So it's it's just these little landmines, like you know, the things that could pop up that we're trying to, you know, add value uh, and and identify for our clients. So all of these little, you know, we we consider them small wins. Um, they might be big wins um, for us. It's just adding value wherever we can. You, you don't want to have every meeting talking about the stock market or what's going on with interest rates. You know, those things are so far out of our control. But these things are uh, things that we can affect change. That's right. 
Okay. Well, Jason, thanks for sharing your story today and congrats to you and your partner, Eric, on all the success you've had at Dogwood. We're excited to check in with you as you continue to grow and see uh, see what's new. And uh, thank you everyone for joining today. And uh, we will, uh, oh wait, actually, uh, yeah. So, uh, sorry, let me close that again. <laughs> I was just seeing if there's one other question that popped in. Um, Cheryl, uh, will you be showing a demo of Vanilla? We'll follow up with you after. We hadn't planned on actually showing the product. We were just gonna focus on Jason's success. Um, so thanks everyone for joining. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and a happy Halloween for those of you that uh, have kids and will be uh, eating candy. And uh, thank you and have a great day. Thanks, Jason. Take care.